guess I do, because otherwise you're not going to get what you want right at the end. I think it's important to talk about dying, but not everybody wants to talk about dying. Um, not even those people who are dying want to talk about dying, because I don't think everybody's ready to die. It, I think it really depends on where they think they might go after dying. So it can be fearful for some people. It's one of the last taboo subjects. People don't tend to talk about it. And then when things do happen, it can be so difficult to actually manage. Um, I don't think we should be talking about it all the time, um, but there are specific times where I think you do need to talk about it because at the end of the day, it's something that we're all going to have to face. And um, we've all got different thoughts about the dying process. People have got their faiths, they've got their families, people have got different types of requests about, you know, end of life. So yes, it is important to talk about it because we're going to have to face it. We need to let people know our last wishes, you know, where we want to die, when we want to die, potentially how we want to die. You know, if you want to be surrounded by friends, relatives, if you don't want certain people around, if you want to be at home, if you want to be in hospital, if you want to have lots of pain relief. It's a very important subject, especially when you get older and you're more associated with, get more experience of people dying around you. I think people generally don't talk about it until it's happened. And sometimes, in a lot of cases, family members and, and people who are close to people who are dying don't want to talk about it because they don't want to think about it happening. When actually, the thing that the person needs most is to kind of be reassured that what's happening to them is natural and real and, and it's not something to be afraid of. I think it is important to talk about dying, but I am afraid to talk about dying because it scares me. Suffering and leaving people behind. At the moment, I feel as if I'm going to go on to eternity. So me and my wife actually have not really talked about it too much, but thoughts go through our minds when we go to a funeral or, or a dear friend of ours is ill and we, we think, um, yeah, we probably should do, but not, never actually get around to it, which is probably not the right thing to be doing. never thought about that question, who do I want to talk to about dying? Um, I think it would probably have to be someone close to me, somebody who understands me and broached in a, in a way that is sensitive and because sometimes if, you, if you're talking to doctors and they tell you that you're dying, it can sometimes be quite abrupt and there's no warmth to the statement. So I think someone close to me would be the best person to talk to about dying. I'd like to talk to my family uh, about dying and the reason is because that they have my best interest at heart. I would speak with my son and my husband. Um, sorry. I think purely for the fact that I would, I'd like them to know what would be happening, what I would do and what I would want when I'm gone. I might talk to my husband about dying, but I also want to talk to our children about dying so they're more aware of it and it's not such a taboo thing and it's quite a difficult conversation to have. Hugely important that they're raised not fearing death but understanding that it's something that does happen, it's a process. Um, too many people make false promises to children, um, you know, so and so is not going to die. It just leads to increased fear and confusion around the subject. I think the people you might want to talk to about dying aren't necessarily set people. There are people in counselling professions, there are, I'm a church minister, so you might want to come and talk to me, but I think it needs to be someone you've got a trusting relationship with, because actually I think this is one of the deepest subjects that we can actually start to talk and share about. Probably also if I was in a situation where I was uh, terminally ill or something like that, then the, the health practitioners would be very obvious that to, to talk to about it, particularly the initial sort of prognosis and diagnosis and what time you've got left. Although whether I'd want to know how much time I'd got left, I'm not sure about that. I'd want to talk to anyone who was sympathetic, understanding, um, who I wasn't going to upset by a conversation. And that's a difficult thing, I think, sometimes, that you feel um, 
perhaps that it's not fair on the other person uh, to talk about dying. So if it's somebody who's experienced being part of that same situation uh, and you can be mutually supportive, that's great. Uh, but also often it's somebody outside of that perhaps family unit or friendship unit who can see things more objectively as well and can help you to make sense of situations that you've been in um, and to put things into perspective and see the positives in the person's life as well as the very sad uh, passing of that person. Different periods where you need to talk to different people in a different way. For example, when a close friend dies as a teenager, you, you're quite confused. But on the other hand, when a parent dies, then I think there's a different kind of conversation you need with people. I do think it's always important to understand that people have different emotional needs as well as practical needs. I would like to talk to my family about it, but they would not talk about it with me because I don't want to hear it. I think men, have, <laughs> men probably have a harder time talking about any subject, unless it's football and beer. Um, but yeah, they, it is a, a, it's a problem that we, we talk about. In a pub, you won't sit down and talk to me and say, hey, guess what, I'm going to die tomorrow, this is what I want. It's not the sort of topic conversation you will have, it's, it is more difficult for us. Talking from experience, my sister died when I was really young and I found that really hard to deal with actually. And if there were more people that would have been more open to talk about that, then uh, probably would have been easier to deal with. I'm lucky in that my children are very supportive and they were a close family, but we haven't got around to having this conversation yet. Well, it's a bit like making a will. You think it's, it's going to bring death closer, but of course it doesn't. I'd like to talk but to, to my husband, but he's not very keen because it's not going to happen to him. I struggle. I, I try, even now, um, when I try and broach it with him about my own death, he sort of um, puts the shutter up. Um, so yes, I'd, I'd love him to be more open and listen to what I'm saying. It wasn't a good conversation, but uh, they said, Mom, stop it, you know, don't even talk about this. But uh, I told them, you know, it's important to know I've already spoken to my husband, um, my mum and dad, and to a certain extent my five-year-old daughter, who has some understanding of um, death and dying. Um, with my husband, I talked about um, our preferences at the end of life, um, how we want our funeral preparations to take place. Um, and with my parents, um, we talked a bit about power of attorney, um, who would be looking after them if they became too unwell to look after themselves um, and what kind of things they'd like to happen in that period if they were poorly. We need to make a will for example but we haven't. We've got two young children so we know that we need to do that and, and, and talking now is making me really think I need to go away and do this. I've lost, I'm of, I'm of an age now, I've lost quite a, a few a few of my family members over the years and friends, etc. This particular loss of my daughter has really floored me. It's, it's absolutely, you know, knocked me over. Um, it's a part of life's experience that is, is central, it's fundamental as anything else. We talk about parenting, we talk about, um, you know, kids going to school, we have lots of debates about what schools you should go to, etc. We talk about, you know, a motherhood and, and birth, everything, every part of life experience is talked about in great detail. This is one part of our life that is hardly ever talked about. And in my experience, it's been the most shattering that I could ever experience. Um, so I think it's extremely important. What I did find personally, although there were hard conversations to have, the more, the more I've spoken about my loss, the more I've spoken about the impact for me and my family, it has been helpful. Over time, it's a process. Um, but we need people, we need the culture to allow us to do that and we need to remove, I, I need to feel able to say what I need to say and that's not easy. I think having gone through it with um, my dad, I think it takes away the taboo. Um, my dad knew he was dying um, and he had a very um, 
upbeat approach really and that was helpful to us around him um, so if he was talking about it that made it easier for us to talk about it um, even down to he wrote his own eulogy for his funeral um, he met the person who was going to do his funeral and said he wanted them to know him um, we sat and chose music together which was um, really nice because then it just made the whole thing much more meaningful and also we had laughter and people smiling at his funeral because it was about him and they knew that it was what he wanted so it made it it made it much more special once you haven't said something to somebody because you haven't been told they're dying then that's lost forever I think it helps the people that are left behind to be able to have some conversation, to have some closure and to prepare themselves. I think there, there are a lot of practicalities and a lot of um, emotional issues and I think the, the clearer people are, then the easier it is to, to understand and cope with it. There's two issues, isn't it? It's your death and the death of those close to you. And it's the death of those close to you that is uh, more difficult to, to manage. The, the social side of, of, of dying, the actual two people, two or three people in a room together um, is maybe what scares me most, like those kind of the prolonged silences, the, the, the awkwardness that sort of comes with dancing around an issue. Um, it would be easier, I guess, if we were all a bit more upfront about it. I know that when I've had close relatives who have died in the past, the the distance from them uh, during that time period leads to a lot of regret further down the way. Um, certainly I've felt that uh, I haven't spent enough time with the people close to me that have died. It's, it's, it's terrifying now for, a, for one reason and is sort of forecasting future events as well which makes it even a bit scarier. Yeah. I would want personally um, to know that my wishes were going to be um, carried out um, when I'm not there to actually, you know, sort of let everybody know. I, I want to talk about it before that, that happens. Um, in the past, I've felt really strongly about organ donation and um, my family all know, my husband and my parents all know what my wishes are with regard to organ donation. I, I wouldn't want people to, to, to be bawling their eyes out too upset and I would like it to be a joyful time. I would like them to, to know that I would like certain poems read. I would like them to know that I'd, if I could choose where I was going to die, I'd like to die at home. I'd, I'd like to donate my organs. All of these things really that they have varying degrees of priority but they're all quite important to me in that context. Recently my brother-in-law died of cancer and I spent a lot of time with him and his wife and we talked about it just because I'd also had a fairly recent experience before that with my brother dying of cancer. So, and, and I thought they dealt with it brilliantly because they really talked about it and they talked, and I was, I was gobsmacked <laughs> actually because they, they talked about the music he was going to have and they talked about the coffin he was going to have and, and it was weird. I thought it was quite weird that they could deal with it so openly and talk about it so well, but I so admired them for doing that because it meant that he got what he wanted and he was part of it. And I think that was really important. I lost my father when I was 19, but he was my age, the age I am now. Um, as a family, we'd never spoken about dying because you don't expect somebody to die in their 40s um, but he did and it left us as a family in a, a really difficult position because although him and my mum were very close and we were very close as a family none of us had any idea what his wishes would would be um, following his death um, and I think it, it's an uncomfortable conversation to have but there's ways of doing it that don't distress. Um, my mum, on the back of um, the incident following my father's death, has sat and planned her funeral and we had quite a comical conversation over a glass of wine um, about what she'd paid for and what she expected and what she wanted to wear and, 
and, and it did feel uncomfortable initially talking about it because I don't want to have to think about the time that my mum won't be with me. Um, but it was nice to know that she's now comfortable knowing that I will carry out her wishes. And I think that's the important thing, to know that what you do after somebody dies is what they would have wanted. And if having that conversation gives you the opportunity to do that, it's got to be a positive thing. I don't want to play the wrong music because we've got different tastes. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's going to happen eventually to all of us. I think even when you speak about it, when it does happen, it's still a shock. It is. A little bit wobbly, actually. It is a tricky subject, and um, if you go too much into it, then the, the, all the feelings that are associated with it and remembering. I think it's good when there's a group of you together and you can talk about it, then it's it's safer um, and when you're with friends and things. I think when you're with family, it's more difficult to talk about. I feel okay talking about dying. Um, that may be because I, I have a strong faith um, in God. So I have a belief about dying, about what will happen to me afterwards. I feel very comfortable to actually talk about it. It's been really helpful. I mean, I've, I've, I've made a decision uh, over time to take the opportunity to speak. It's really important for me to do this. But I will talk as much as I feel safe and able to do, if you like. Um, you can't hear the whole cake, uh, you know, but you recognise that's happening for me. I recognise, if you like, your compassion to me to do that. So it's, it's felt safe and it's felt, you know, the right thing to do. And I think that's what I'd like to be a part of, is setting up a culture where people can feel that more often. I think as an English society, I worked in Saudi Arabia and their way of dealing with death is completely um, different. So cultural aspects come into death as well. And it has, you know, it's nice to actually talk about it because I think in England we are quite private in regards to death and how we deal with it. And actually it's probably beneficial that we are a little bit more open and expressing. It's part of my job um, and my remit is to try to engage in people in whole life conversations from birth to death. And we're often quite good at talking about birth and the struggles we have about that. So to come here and be part of this, I find it very exciting. I think the most difficult thing is opening the conversation and then after that it gets a bit easier. Mm -hmm.